name is uh, Michael Crook. I'm a professor at Pepperdine. I teach strategy, which is the last class uh, MBAs take before they uh, graduate with an MBA. I grew up in uh, Aloha, Oregon, which is a very small town outside of Beaverton, outside of Portland. I was really excited to join the Navy and you know, see the world, as I said back then. And I remember getting on the plane in Portland, Oregon, and uh, taking off in the plane. I'd never been in a plane before. And I looked out the window and I said, I don't care what's going to happen in the next four years. It's already worth it. It was just like, it was like, yes, this is going to be a great adventure. Oh, I remember getting to boot camp and just crying my eyes out. It's going, what did I do? You know, why did I do this? How could I even consider doing this? And I saw the, the movie for the SEAL teams and uh, Bud's training. I said, yeah, I, I think that looks great. And I didn't have anything guaranteed. So I said, I'll take the test. And I took the physical test and uh, passed it and got orders to Bud's. I was just, you know, like, whoa, I, there I was. And my class 89, I think we had close to 120, 130 other uh, recruits. And uh, they were all bigger and stronger and smarter than me. And uh, I didn't think I had really much of a chance to make it through. At the beginning of Hell Week, they, they told us to do a, a four-mile time to run of it with as fast as you could go. And of course, we all had PRs, our best times. And then a few days in, into Hell Week, they say, OK, we're going to do a four-mile time run again. And this time, if you don't beat your time from the start of Hell Week, you're out. We're going to drop you. And of course, they weren't going to, but that, that's what they said. And right away, people were ringing the bell, going, no way, no way, no way. I'm not doing that. I'm tired of this. And uh, uh, I didn't beat my time, but I came close to it. And uh, after reflecting on it, I just realized the power of the brain, you know, just what we could do if we mentally told ourselves we could do it. I've always felt like I had a secret sauce above people that hadn't gone through it. Bud's training was uh, really the turning point in my life. I had very little direction in my life up until that point. And I was also very much an individual. And um, Bud's training completely changed my way of thinking about that. In fact, I would have never made it through Bud's without, without uh, being a team player. That's the, that's the common denominator of all, however many of us made it, 17 or 20 of us that made it, was uh, we were all team players. That's the only way to get the great things to happen. Um, and I found that out in, in, in my business career is that you have to have great teams. So I, I spent uh, four years in the teams and uh, I got out and started going to college and um, we're just loving it. I mean, just all of a sudden this, this, I never had liked school before. All of a sudden I was loving school. I was loving learning. I was loving being an entrepreneur. I got a degree in uh, forestry, worked in the woods a few years, and uh, then I got an MBA. And um, uh, my first job out of being an MBA was, um, you know, I was headed to NASA. And uh, I did a, uh, I got a call from one of my professors. He says, hey, would you like to do a weekend project at Yakima, which was a rack company for skis, snowboards, kayaks, bikes, and uh, for, for your car. And I said, sure. And I went there on the weekend, and they're all there. The people there are hanging out there in shorts. They're like, it's my tribe. I find my tribe. You know, all these snowboarders and kayakers, and they're hanging out, you know, just loving what they're doing. And I just said, whoa, I, this is what I've got to do. And that's how I got into the outdoor industry. So I was in the outdoor industry, which is, you know, I was a kayaker and a cyclist and a runner. I loved that stuff. So I found what I was really passionate about. And, uh, and I kind of was looking around and, and what was instilled to me in the teams is, okay, where do I want to be? What's my goal? What's my mission? You know, where am I going? And I thought, wow, outdoor industry, two best companies, REI and Patagonia. I said, well, I'm going to be CEO of one of those companies. And uh, that was probably 1988. And uh, I became CEO of Patagonia in 1999. Uh, you know, you, you, you learn in the teams how to think about about things, how to think strategically, and then down to the execution and how to get it done. When you come out of the teams, people want to be around you. They want to be around that positive energy, that can-do attitude. And being such a team player, people wanted to work with you because you were a team player. You weren't trying to be an individual. I think that so many of the lessons in the teams are so applicable to the business world. You know, I went from Yakima to uh, Moonstone, where I took over, uh, you know, a much larger role to my first kind of general manager, president role was at Kelty, the backpack company, and then Pearl Zumi, which is a, you know, a great cycling performance company, and then Patagonia, and after that I went to a venture capital firm and founded that with Steve Case. 
And uh, you know, after I finished uh, with venture capital, I, I started teaching and, and consulting. So all of the lessons I learned in the team have helped me all along the way. <laughs>